So now we'll do some more integration practice and the uh, functions will become a little bit more complicated. Um, the first thing you really need to know is there are no rules or there are not many rules for integration. So we have this power rule that works great for x to the n or a sum or difference of x to the n's. So any any function in this form, x to any power plus, you can have a constant, x to any power plus another constant or minus another constant, x to any power, it works nice for. Um, you can't use it though if it's not something times x to the n. In other words, what if n was on, or x was on the bottom? So let me just get rid of this. So if it were, 1 over, say, x to the fourth. What a lot of people try to do on this early on would be just to add 1 to the power of x down here and multiply by 1 over 5, but you can't do that because we don't have a formula for the integral of 1 over x to the n. We only have a formula for x to the n. So today we're going to look at a way to get around that. Um, before we start, I just want to remind you that if you're going to, you can only use this power for any n that isn't equal to 1. In other words, or isn't equal to negative 1. In other words, n cannot be negative 1. We cannot integrate this yet. That won't be until chapter 5. Anything else, though, other than negative 1, we can. So here we go. The first example is the integral of 3 over the square root of x. Now, the power rule doesn't apply because x is on the bottom, but we can use simple rules of exponents to make this the integral of 3 over x to the 1 half, which is still no good. But the simple rule of exponents, we can make that x to the negative one half. Now we can fit it to this rule exactly. We do have x to the n. So now the power rule says you just add one to the exponent. So you negative one half plus two over two, which is plus one, is one half. And then multiply by the reciprocal of one half which is 2. You don't have to show this step. You can just go 3 times 2 is 6. Add your plus C, and you're done. Check that by taking the derivative. The derivative of 6x to the 1 half is 3x to the negative 1 half. So we're good. Next question has a couple of x's, but the key here is we have an x on the bottom. So we're going to do the same thing that we just did. Uh, we'll change it to rational exponents. X to the two-thirds here. Combine these exponents because still you need to get that X out of the bottom. So we'll have X to the second minus two-thirds, two minus two-thirds is six-thirds minus two-thirds, which is four-thirds. Now the x is on top, now we can integrate. Um, so you add one to four-thirds, that's seven-thirds. Multiply by the reciprocal seven-thirds, which is three-sevenths. Three-sevenths times five is 15 sevenths, we're done, plus C, that's it. Uh, we'll get to number three in a second. I want to do one bonus problem here. Say it was the integral of, here's 2A, 7X to the 3 halves over 16, there we go. 
Um, now, you don't really have to do anything with this because there is no X on the bottom. As a matter of fact, the 16 is a constant. So is a 7, for that matter. So you can think of this as just 7 sixteenths times the integral of X to the 3 halves dx, and then just take it from there. That's easy. So last problem. Um, now, again, what a lot of students like to do early on is just go, oh, this is easy. Add 4 divide by it minus x to the third times 2. But you can't because there's an x on the bottom, and you have to take care of that before you do anything. So we're going to do that. And the best way to do it is to split up the fraction. As long as you have one term on the bottom, you can split up the fraction. So this is 4x cubed over x, the square root of x, which is x to the 1 half, minus 2x cubed over x to the 1 half, plus 1 over x to the 1 half. And that's all still with respect to x. So now we're going to use rules of exponents to bring all the x's to the top just by subtraction. 3 minus 1 half is 6 halves minus 1 half. So 5 halves. 3 minus 1 half, whoa, that's a 2. My mistake. 2 minus 1 half is 4 halves minus 1 half, half which is 3 halves. And this last exponent, which is bring up, it's 1x to the negative 1 half. It's still all with respect to x. Now you integrate. Add 1 to 5 halves, you get 7 halves. Multiply by 2 sevenths, so it's 8 sevenths. Add 1 to the 3 halves, you get 5 halves. Multiply by 2 fifths, so it's 4 fifths. And finally, on the last one, you add 1 to the negative 1 half, you get positive 1 half. Multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2. Add your plus C. Um, you're done. Um, one last thing you can do, though. Um, I'm not going to be that picky about that now because I'm more, right now I'm more focused on can you get the unsimplified integral, but you can definitely factor out an X to the 1 half your answer, just like we did with derivatives. Um, so you're subtracting one half from all of these, so that's six halves, which is three. This is four halves, which is two. And then you can also get a common denominator of 35 on the bottom, factor that out, and so on. We're not going to do that. Um, that's enough. This video has gone long enough, I think. But that's how you take care of integrals where the x isn't on the top. Uh, the next video, everybody's favorite, is trig. Uh, before you look at that, you may want to just take another glance at this, do a couple practice problems. But we'll see you then.